you know, when you look at a cloudy day and a dull day, you can almost see that the light that was first in Adam before he started to die after Eve sinned started to fade. And that's exactly what happens here in these dying mortal frames. The process of it is horrible, literally horrible. I'll be so thankful when death is abolished. So thankful. I decided to come out here and do this little reading this morning. Um, the gospel is God's power and life, not a new nature. Since Adam, death has been operating in all of his posterity. So that the only life we know is the process of dying. Sin so lowered that vital, the vital functions in Adam's body, that the aura which emanated from its intense vitality and clothed it with the glorious garment of light, faded, so as to become imperceptible to human eyes, and disclosed his frame, no longer effulgent with life, but dull and death-like, naked and humiliated. It degraded the vital functions so that they became the source of distress and disease and dissolution and death. In brief, sin made no essential change in man's nature or flesh, but greatly lowered the power of the life that animated his body. Now life is the effect of spirit. A lowering of vital force does not indicate a change in nature or flesh, but in plenitude of spirit. When God takes his spirit to himself, all flesh perishes. Job chapter 34, verses 14 through 15. Sin, therefore, is a matter of spirit. The act, the act of sin is a matter of spiritual relationship. The fact of sin is a matter of spiritual power. Like fruit plucked from a tree, Adam was severed from vital spiritual connection with God. Such fruit begins to die the moment it is picked. Such is mankind since Adam sinned. The fruit is the same. Its nature is not changed. Its flesh is not transformed, but its vitality is ebbing away. The judgment of God on Adam is strikingly suggestive of the true character of sin. Thorns and thistles are concomitants of man's sin and a graphic illustration of its real essence. What are thorns? They are stunted, undeveloped, rudimentary growths, undoubtedly due to the lack of a sufficient vitality to develop them into a proper form. There were no thorns in Eden, nor will there be any such thing, when once more the plants exalt in the ideal conditions and fruitful fertility of the coming eon, which is a thousand years coming up. Then the earth will not be dying so much as it is right now. Death is still operating in the thousand years, but the earth will be replenished. That next coming eon, the thousand years, will be awesome. Anybody living there will be thankful. We'll be thankful for everything. The log of life will be there. It'll be just tremendous, tremendous, tremendous beauty. We see this, this right here. This is dull compared to what's coming in the next eon. It'll be so brilliant in color and vibrancy on the earth when it's re 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 refitted. I would say that the earth is gonna be refitted, literally. What will be done to change them? How can the rose, lo rose lose its thorn and the cactus its spines? Will the creator change their nature? Will he remove the sharp and painful lances lancelets that disfigure and disgrace them now he will not alter the plant but change its environment so that's it once the environment changes then everything comes to life and that's what's going to happen <laughs> this earth is going to be shifted and there won't, won't be any more seasons seasons is unnatural what you're going to see like these seasons that we have right now are unnatural there won't be any more seasons in the, in the thousand years. He will fit it 
with the wine of life, and thorns will develop into branches and spines into leaves. The principle that produ produces thorns and death in plants is identical with sin, which produces degeneration and death in mankind. What does the gospel bring? It is God's power for salvation of everyone who believes. Romans 1.16 Sin is spiritual deficiency or lack of the divine glory. Romans 3.23 So that's exactly it. The spirit does not vibrate right now in full power, but will. Even in the thousand years on this earth, that spirit, the Spirit of God will be just vibrating through everything. And mankind will notice it huge. They will believe, literally believe. Israel will bring them. Israel is the key for this earth, this next eon. It won't be a new earth. It'll be a regenerated earth in a thousand years. Amazing stuff. The evangel supplies the missing energy. Exactly. Note carefully. The contrast in the fifth of Romans. While we are still infirm, Christ died for the sake of the irreverent. Man does not sin because he that because that is his nature. Right. He sins, he misses the mark because he is mortal. He is dying. I'll say it a million times. But because he has lost the vital force which should sustain him, and that is the operation of death and dying. His nature might be changed ever so much, or ever so often, but that would not doom him to death. Other creatures who have, different, have a different nature share his, share his penalty with him, for they also share, share man's infirmity and humiliation. Animals, plant life, insects, birds, everything dies on this earth right now. It will not so much die in the thousand years there will be the ones who will make it to the end of the thousand years in the coming eon and we'll move on from the great white throne to the new earth because the lamb's book of life will be open and they that are written in the book of life will go to the new earth and i would say that's the majority of them i still believe this the majority of them because they know not what they do. Human beings don't know what they do. They're duped. They're duped by outside controlling forces. And right now what's operating in the air, which is the principalities and those wicked forces, they're the ones that's operating mostly on this earth right now. Why do you think we're being persecuted? Why do you think we're being beaten, beaten down as members of the body of Christ? Because they're in power right now. God sustains us and keeps us. That's the only reason why we're staying here right now, is to herald the evangel and to make sure that what God has put together through the body of Christ will come to fruition and the completeness of Christ at his presence will happen and that's going to happen swiftly. We will now give a list of some of the principal passages in which sin is brought before, before us not as an act, but as a fact or principle of action. These are necessarily limited to the later letters of inspiration, for the law and the prophets hardly recognize sin otherwise than as an actual deed. Paul alone can supply us with the solution of our present problem. Okay, so I'm going to go through this list tomorrow, this list of scripture. It's getting chilly out here. I might do another cast and then leave but uh, yeah so we'll go through these uh, passages tomorrow and we'll start with them so it's wonderful to be with you it's wonderful to share always I thank God I thank God for all of you I thank God so much for all of you you know in times of distress you're there this is so important for every single member of the body of Christ to share and be together in spirit no matter what no matter what we're going through the stress of this life is pretty pressurized right now but it is what it is in that respect the peace of God is more awesome so when you grasp that peace and know that God is operating the all then you can get it grace and peace to all my brethren see you tomorrow